Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Women's Day, and I'm so excited to be here today. I am so excited to bring this word. I always say it's a privilege and an honor and a grand golden opportunity to be able to bring the word today. But before we go into the word, shall we pray? Father God, we thank you right now for who you are. We thank you that you hear us when we pray. We thank you for the word that's been coming forth. God, we ask you right now to just open up our ears that we may be able to hear what you have to say to us today, God. Open up our hearts that we may be able to receive it, God. And God, just let your anointing rest, God, and just any of those that, that may be out there, Father, that's needing a special, special, special prayer request, God, we ask you right now to just let them feel your warm grace upon their prayer request, God. And Father, as we go into this service today, we ask you to let your anointing rest, God, and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, once again, I'm so excited. This is Women's Day, and I am just excited to get ready to go into this word. Uh, now, four weeks ago, Apostles started a series on the anointing. And I would like to try to stay in that same area and pick up just a little bit and talk about the anointing today. Now, the anointing, if you hung around church, play church, act like you went to church for at least 10 years, I'm sure you heard of the word anointed. Oh, that person is anointed. Oh, when he pray, he's anointed. Oh, when he preach, he's anointed. Oh, when she sing, they are so anointed. Anointed, anointed, anointed. Oh, I want that person's anointing. But Apostle carefully brought the word anointing down. Let's think about some of the things that he said about the anointing. There are four ingredients that describe the anointing. The four ingredients that makes up the anointing is the first one, myrrh, cinnamon, calamus, cassia. Now today, I want to just stick with that word myrrh, anointing. Now remember, Apostle defined the word myrrh, which means bitter or bitterness. Now, we're going to talk about that and break that down a little bit. But let's go to the Word of God this morning. First, let's go to 1 Samuel 16, I believe it's 16 and 12. And it reads, So he sent for him and brought him to him. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance handsome looking guy. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. Now, right there, I want to just quickly tell us what was going on in the scripture. We know uh, Samuel, God has spoke to Samuel and told him to go to Jesse's house and anoint one of Jesse's sons. Now, remember, Jesse had nine sons. Now, David was what we call the least or the youngest. Now, Scripture tells us he was in between the age of 10 and 15 years old, and he became king at 30 years of age. But then before we go farther with David, we also have to remember that uh, Saul was also anointed as king. But then God chose Saul to be king, but because of Saul disobedient and not following the orders, God was saying, you know what, Saul, you out of here. And this is the reason why Samuel had to go to Jesse's house and anoint another king. And that's where David came in. Now, we have to remember when David was anointed as king, he did not immediately go into his kingship because he was anointed. David still tend the sheep. David did not quit his job because he was anointed. David continued to do what David was doing in his lifestyle because he knew that he had to wait on the time coming. We also know because of his anointing, David was able to kill the, uh, Goliath, but he still did not just go out and say, hey, I'm anointed, let me do this thing. He understood his anointing not only just tend to the sheep, he was also an anointed musician and how there came times that he had to even play uh, for the, the music for Samuel, for Saul. But we got to understand David recognized his anointing, but he waited for that right time to be the king. So now let's just go to 1 Samuel 18, 10 and 11. I'm going to read about four or five scriptures, but I, I want to 
read all those so we can come to where we're going today. So 1 Samuel 18, 10 and 11 says, the next day an evil spirit, now watch this, from God, from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyrics of the heart. And he, as he usually did, Saul had a spear in his hand and he hid it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David, he, he, he got away each time, twice, he, David got away. So now let's read the next one, first uh, Samuel 19 and 2. It says, Saul took his son Jonathan and all the attendants to do what? Kill David. But Jonathan had taken a great likeness of David and warned him, David, 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 my father Saul is looking for you. He wants a chance to do what? Kill you. Be on your guards tomorrow, David. Go into hiding and stay there. Can I read another one? 1 Samuel 23, 1 and 2. When David was told, look, David, the Philistines are fighting against Kilah and are losing the thrusting floors. He, David, inquired. Now remember that word. David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines, Lord? The Lord answered him, Go, attack the Philistines and save Kilah. Can we read one more? Let's go to 1 Samuel 37 through 8. Then David said to Abathah, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abathah brought it to him and David, here's his word again, inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this rotting party? Will I overtake them? He's asking God, will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Now, I had to read all of those scriptures to sort of bring you to what we're going to talk about today. Remember, we was talking about uh, David when he was anointed. We talked about King Saul when he was rejected from the anointing. We talked about David inquired of the Lord. So today we're still going to talk about the anointing but I want to call it the anointing and the GPS. GPS, we're all familiar. If we do anything today, we're familiar with the GPS. What does that GPS stand for? Geographic Positioning System. The system uses data from satellite to pinpoint a location on Earth and to help people find their way to their destination. Now, let me ask you, now, I'm from Warren, my husband, he gets on me all the time about the GPS. I, for some reason, have problems following this GPS, but I'm getting a lot better. But remember, the GPS is for us to get directions of places that we haven't gone before. But have you ever picked up, went to the GPS and you said, my God, that GPS is taking me everywhere. Good example, Sheila on Sunday, she was trying to go to the bank and just five minutes down the street, she said the GPS took her all the way around 45 minutes away to get to where she was trying to go. But my question is, Sheila, did you really follow the GPS? Now, sometimes the GPS may take us 15, 20 minutes farther, but there may be a reason. Usually the GPS tried to detour you from accident, road closures, because that GPS, remember, is satellite. It's able to see the things that we can't see. Now, I know my husband is one to say, this crazy GPS, it, it had me bypassing it. Yeah, sometimes the GPS may do that. You know, 99.9%, .9%, you can really depend on that GPS to get you where you have to go. But there are times that we feel like, oh, I don't need this GPS. I know where I'm going now. I be do I have a witness? Do you know, can you relate what I'm talking about? Have you ever driven somewhere and you felt like, I don't need this GPS. I know where I'm going now. You get started, 
you're using a GPS, and then you turn around, you cut it off because then what happened? You get lost. So bring this to anointing. Now, when I hit an address on my GPS, it always asks me, hello, Gayla, where to? Well, today my GPS is saying where to, and I'm saying anointing Boulevard. So the GPS that I want to talk about today is God positioning system and God's promise solution. If we stick to the GPS, if we just stick to God's promise solution and God positioning, we have to have the GPS in our lives to continue the anointing that God has on us. If we remember the thing with uh, Saul was he failed to go back to his GPS. God gave him carefully instructions on what to do because he felt like he was keen already. He did not use his GPS. Therefore, God said, you out of here, you out of here. Are there things in our life that the, the GPS, God's promised solution, has tried to take us to and we feel like, oh, I, I've been there, done that, I can do this. But in the things in the anointing, we have to follow the GPS. Now, we got to remember with David, there are things that although he was anointed, Although David was anointed, David was keen. He had won so many battles, the songs that Saul has a thousand, David won 10,000. But we got to remember there came a time in David's life while he was anointed, he hid in the cage. He was afraid of Saul. Where does the murk come? This is what I want to talk about. We can be anointed, but that does not mean that we're not going to have to face some murk. But we got to understand, remember, I told you, remember that word, inquire. When David was in his battle, although he knew he was keen, he had a resume of winning wars. He was known throughout the city that David can win a war. But David got to a point, even with his anointing, he got to a point that, let me go to my GPS, inquire of the Lord. He had to go back to his GPS. God, can I win this war? God, what's going to happen? We have to be able to go back to God's solution, the GPS in our life when we get to the myrrh. I believe that was the thing that helped David in his battle of running from Saul, in his battle of hiding in the cage. He realized I'm anointed but I still have to go to my resources, the GPS of our life. So let's remember what I want to tell us today is anointed we may be and anointed we shall be, but we also will have some myrrh in our life. But the main important thing that we got to remember when those myrrh situations, the bitterness, the hardship, when that come, we have to also remember, I got to go back to my GPS. This is where we find out how to walk through. This is where we will find out our rest. We thank God for the grace. This is where, when we go to that GPS, God's positioning, God's solution, God has everything in control. But if we do it just like we do when we travel, we feel like we don't need the GPS because we've been there before. We feel like, oh, the GPS is taking me all the way around. No, if we've been there before, we've been anointed just as David in his anointing, he yet had to inquire of God on which way to go. Let me ask you one more question. How many times have we used or started a GPS and felt like, oh, I've been this route before. And then we turn the GPS off. Or how many times have we used our GPS and we felt like the GPS was taking us a long way around. But we got to remember GPS or pretty much satellite. So the GPS is able to see where we can't see. The GPS is able to see 
the distance. It's able to see that there's a wreck up the road. My GPS sometimes said, watch out, park car. Watch out, the popo. Watch out, this and that and the third. Now, had we had not had my GPS, my way, the GPS on, I could have been speeding and went right to the police or I could have just went right into a car wreck. So we need the GPS in our life. And that brings me, I want to remember, I want us to think about it again. GPS today, God's promising solution for us. We, I want to bring this down with the anointing, the steps. Let's remember David continually to pull out his GPS, inquiring of the Lord before he went to war. Now, remember, although David was anointed, although David had a great reputation, he had his resume look good for him, but he still had to pull and ask God, inquire of God, will I win this war? So what am I saying today? What is it that I want us to grab hold on today? We may be anointed, but there may be times that as we are anointed that we're going to walk into the myrrh, the bitterness. There are situations in our life that we, we're just uncomfortable with. But in that situation, how do we handle, how do we deal knowing that we are anointed by God, knowing that we have won a lot of battles, but we still have to embrace using our GPS. We have to be able to know this is the only thing is going to help me walk through my path of mirror, the bitterness. I got to inquire of God. How do I do this, God? How do, how do I make it through this situation? This mirror, this bitterness, God help me. We got to inquire. We got to go back in using the GPS. Remember, it knows, it sees all there is to know. We have to trust our GPS. I read a statement, it says, just because my path is different doesn't mean that I'm lost. What am I saying about that? Sometimes we go on a path and people may think they don't know what they're doing, but they don't realize that I'm following my GPS. I'm going through the direction. It may look like I'm going a different path in the midst of what's going on, but it does not mean that I'm lost. So again, today, to bring it home, wrap it up. What am I saying today in the midst of our myrrh, in the midst of our bitterness? How do we walk through this? Pull out your GPS, God's divine words, God's promised solution. And I guarantee you, you will reach and make it through your situation, through the myrrh. You will make it to your destination if you use your GPS. Shall we pray? Father God, as we come to you today, thank you first of all for your anointing. Thank you God for your guidance. Thank you God for being with us. Thank you God that you are the GPS in our life, that we have the opportunity to open up the GPS in these merged times of our life. God, thank you that you are allowing us to walk through the myrrh so we can go to the GPS and, and know that you are with us, God. And Father, we just thank you for this. And God, is anyone out there going through their bitterness, going through their myrrh, God, I want to encourage them to go to the GPS for guidance, for direction, for strength. And Father, we just bless you and we look to you for all things and we praise you in Jesus' name. Hey, I trust and pray that this word was a blessing to you today. And hey, definitely, definitely, definitely come back next Sunday. Because guess what? Apostle is going to be back. And I believe he's going to touch a little bit on murder. But he has another one coming that's going to be awesome. I'm not going to tell you about it. You're going to have to come back and listen to that. It's going to be worth your while. I encourage you. And on that same note, hey, follow us on social media. And remember, we do the Monday Night Live on Monday nights at 7 p.m. We would love for you to join us. And then on Thursday, we have the game plan, which we break down the word from Sunday morning. But hey, I encourage you, encourage you, join us, share this word, follow us, get connected, okay? So until next Sunday, 
Again, I pray that you enjoyed this word, but I'm looking forward to seeing everybody again next Sunday because our apostle will be back to with his apron. I guess he's the recipe. Yes, the recipe. He's going to cook up some more of the myrrh and the cinnamon. So I encourage you, join us next Sunday. Until then, God bless. Use your GPS. Take care. <laughs>